Hello everyone and welcome for this new video. In this episode we are going to talk about oil painting and safety. Alright, so this video is crucial because many people fear that oil painting is actually toxic and they really don't want to start because they've heard so many things about turpentine and about the fumes and the toxicity. We can say that oil painting sort of has a bad reputation. I don't know, maybe it's due to the, the strong smell of turpentine, which by the way, don't really have to use. I never use any turpentine in my studio, just saying. Or maybe it's also due to these old masters that use these very toxic products. I mean, at some point they had paints that were containing mercury and arsenic. We don't do that anymore. The manufacturers can't sell them anymore. And I don't think they would really want to. I mean, there are new legislation and regulations on these products. We paint in a much safer environment than in the past. And if you use the right knowledge, with the much safer products that we have today, I mean, really, there's no argument for not starting oil painting and start to paint safely. Now, many people think that oil paint itself is toxic and it's not true. Oil paint contains only pigments and oil. Now, you can have pigments in powder that can be harmful uh, if you grind them yourself or uh, if you create your own paint out of dry pigments and oil. If it's your case, you should make sure that you don't inhale some of the, the, the dust from the pigments and you need to wear a safety mask and you should protect your eyes. Most pigments are harmless. Let's say burnt sienna is just iron oxide. It's, it's rust. Uh, yellow ochre, it's, it's a type of earth. Uh, most pigments really are harmless, but some of them can be dangerous if you ingest them. Uh, lead is very toxic. It is the base for flake white or Kremnitz white. It's not used that much anymore and it has been banned in, in most countries. I don't know if it's, if it's still available or not in your country. But really, if you don't want to use lead white, just pick up some titanium white and you're good to go. You have other pigments that can cause uh, metal poisoning if you ingest them, like cadmium or cobalt. But it's not like they are irreplaceable. For instance, you can use pyrrole red, which is very good. Now, considering the quantities that you have to use for a painting, these pigments are only dangerous if ingested, so don't eat your paint. No, but seriously, if you are not confident that the pigment that you want to use is safe, just check the safety data on, on this pigment. So if you want to be sure to use your pigments safely, just use these tips. Do not lick your brush or put the handle in your mouth. That's a bad habit. Do not keep food or drinks around your paint. Always wash your hands properly every time you take a break. Uh, keep your studio clean. I see this, this kind of fantasy of the messy studio of like, you know, the romantic artist. Uh, well, really, it's not necessary. It's not safe. Now, of course, as many people know, the most harmful part of painting is the use of the solvents. By solvents, I mean turpentine, mineral spirits, um, and odorless mineral spirits. The best thing to use, in my opinion, is odorless mineral spirits. It doesn't evaporate as much, but you have to know that the fumes are just as toxic as any solvent. So. No matter what you use, if you prefer odorless mineral spirits to turpentine, you still have to use that in a well-ventilated studio. These products, they evaporate and the resulting fumes end up in the air around your paintings or in your studio, so where you are. Now, if you have a big room that's ventilated, uh, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. 
because uh, uh, as long as you have an entry spot for the air and an exit spot, the air in your studio will be renewed. But you have to think about creating this opening and creating this airflow, uh, which is going to renew the air. This is the, the key thing. If you don't want to paint with solvent, there are options to paint solvent free. You can paint using only oil. Let's say that you paint a la prima, which means with only one layer. In that case, using only oil is going to be very effective and you, you don't need that much solvent. Uh, you also have another alternative, which is water soluble oil painting. In that case, the water is used as a solvent because basically for acrylic and gouache, uh, water is a solvent. With uh, water soluble oil painting, the formula has been changed to create an emulsion that allows water and the molecules of oil to bind. And um, yeah, if you, you can still use the, the traditional approach, it's all made to be used exactly the same way. But the thing is that instead of solvent, you can use water to clean off your brush or to spread the paint. Uh, you have special mediums created for water soluble paints. It's a great option. The only thing that's different is that water and uh, mineral spirits or turpentine, they don't have the same consistency, the same flow, they don't flow the same way. So they behave differently and there are some things that are um, that need to be kept in mind if you paint with water soluble oil paint that you don't have to worry with traditional paint. The thing is also you can mix traditional paint with water soluble. So that could be a great option if you want to um, to paint but you uh, you don't want really to start uh, with traditional paints and use solvents. Now, you also have uh, non-toxic solvents that uh, are most of the time citrus-based. They, they don't really work as well, in my opinion. That's my humble opinion. And when it comes to putting it on my canvas, I still prefer to use odorless mineral spirits. But you can use them and especially they can be very helpful for cleaning, cleaning brushes and doing all this stuff. Many people are afraid of solvents because I think mostly they think that you have to use a huge amount of solvents, like you have a huge bucket and it's just like evaporating all over the place. But the thing is with oil painting, you really don't have to use a lot of solvent. I, I can't stress that enough. It's a, a really important and key aspect of oil painting. You don't need a lot of solvent to paint. All right, so how can you use as little solvent as possible? Here's the first idea. Use soap and water for cleaning instead of solvent. Don't use a huge bucket of solvent now, when you use uh, solvents for your medium, you don't have to put a, a big quantity of it in a jar and leave it open next to your palette. So if you ever drop a jar containing solvent like this one, this could be an issue because it's really hard to pick up and this can create a lot of trouble. This is why I suggest that you use these tiny droppers. These are tiny bottles that are used for uh, essential oils or for vaping liquid. And they are very helpful because they have a safety cap and they have a tiny neck that allows you to just uh, use drop by drop. And as you can see, they don't spill. So this is a really a good idea if you want to keep your, your mediums and every time you're not using them, just close the cap back and uh, and that's it. And with this in your studio, you can have them around 
it's much better than having, I don't know, a big container and you put all your medium in there and you drop your brush in it. That's something that I really don't think you should do. Instead, just use this, put a couple of drops in your paint, mix with a palette knife and you're good to go. And the quantity that you use every time is really minimal. So uh, this can keep you safe, can keep your studio clean and organized. And number three, you can avoid washing your brushes in solvent before changing colors. Well, this is a habit of watercolor. You dip your brush in the water, you know, and the water turns into the color of the paint and that's funny and at some point it becomes brown that's what a color thing right you don't need that for oil painting because oil paint is very thick and consistent and because of that you can clean your brush dry you can clean it simply with a, a, a rag with a, a piece of paper towel you just drag your brush on the paper towel and you pick up more of the color. And guess what? Even if you had, I don't know, red before and you want to pick up yellow, it's not going to make orange on your brush if you just pick enough of the new paint is going to remain fresh. In your studio, you have to keep everything shut. You need to keep every jar containing solvent shut. This is a, a huge thing and you have to do that every time. All the rags that have been used to absorb solvent have to be disposed of in a closed bin. You also have airtight bins that exist for chemicals. Finally, you should never pour your solvent down the drain. Now, finally, let's talk about painting in a well-ventilated studio and this is the, the main thing if you want to paint safely this is this should be your first concern you can open two windows every couple of hours or if it's warm outside you can leave them open for as much as you can you have to think about ventilating regularly and you should always think about an entry spot and an exit spot if you really think about ventilating regularly and if you avoid to use excessive amounts of solvents, the air in your studio should be pretty safe. All right, so there are some things that you want to do outside. Even if you have very good ventilation in your studio, you really want to be very careful. And these things are varnishing. Varnishing creates a lot of fumes, so you want to do that outside or in, a, in an open garage. Uh, if you want to create a big wash of solvent on your canvas, it's also preferable to do that outside. If you want to clean your tools with solvents or any task that requires a huge amount of solvent and not just a couple of drops as, as usual. If it requires a lot of solvent, it needs to be done outside or somewhere that's not the place that you are going to paint in. Now let's talk about skin contact hazard. Well, it's no secret you should avoid skin contact when dealing with oil painting products. Solvents can easily be absorbed by the skin. Every time you accidentally get paint on your skin, you should immediately wash it. You don't want it to penetrate somehow through cuts or scratches or, or accidentally ingest some of it. Now, you want to avoid to touch the paint or touch any solvent, so latex gloves or silicone gloves are always a good idea, especially if you're doing something messy. Let's say that you have uh, to uh, remove something on your painting or you have to clean up your brushes, you have to clean up your palette, Always think about uh, wearing latex gloves. You have various levels of protection depending on the thickness, depending on the materials. So uh, check this out, take something very safe and uh, keep your skin protected. And now we're gonna talk about a final risk regarding oil paint. And it's not a risk that's strictly speaking about paint, it's more about oil. Now, as you know, the oil that you use in your paint 
is a drying oil. And a drying oil doesn't really dry, it's actually a chemical reaction. You know, it, it's called a polymerization. It uses oxygen and, and as most chemical reactions using oxygen, it produces heat. Now, when this reaction happens on the canvas, well, you don't notice the heat. It's actually impossible to notice. But if you trap all the oil in a very small place, like let's say a big ball of uh, rags that were used to absorb linseed oil, in that case, you might run the risk of having a spontaneous combustion of the linseed oil. So generally speaking, oil painters never use large enough quantities of linseed oil for this to happen. And most of the time, uh, people that have this happening to them are people uh, who stain wooden furniture with linseed oil and they, they dispose of it in a cardboard box in the sun and the heat gets really intense and, and it catches on fire. But if as a painter you use oil regularly for your medium, so just a couple of drops here and there and just within your paint, Really, it's not no problem. It's not going to catch on the fire, but if you ever uh, like spill the content of a, a bottle of oil, let's say, uh, and you have to absorb most of it, here's how to dispose of the rags properly. So before disposal, the rags used with linseed oil should be allowed to dry completely in a safe place, away from flammable materials. When completely dry, store the rags in an airtight metal container away from all combustible materials. And you can also soak the rags in water before disposing of them. Now, this is a risk that you have to know because, uh, well, it can happen, but uh, un unless you really drop a bottle of oil, uh, it shouldn't be an issue if you're just using rags to to clean your brushes. If you use normal amounts of paint, normal amounts of oil in your studio, uh, you should be perfectly safe. All right, that's it for this video. You can find more resources on my website. You'll find a link below. If you want to learn more about the oil painting techniques and materials, you can uh, check out my oil painting course. It's really focused on techniques. So if you're a beginner, if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what all the products do, this course will cover all the basic knowledge and take you to the advanced techniques in a very progressive way. I have received so many good reviews that I'm sure you'll like it. Also, a big thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. This video wouldn't be possible without you. The support is phenomenal. If you want to check out my Patreon, you can find the link in the description box as well. There I post exclusive content, behind the scenes and things that I do regularly in my studio. Thank you very much for watching. Don't hesitate to like and subscribe. I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, have fun painting and be safe.